We just had an interesting development come out from the Federal Reserve late on the 3rd. So they released this joint press release along with the FDIC and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. This joint statement talks about crypto asset risk to the banking system. We'll talk through this in detail and look at their publication because this is important as we think about some of the utility use cases of crypto assets for cross-border remittances as a great example. And when we think of the digital asset XRP, it's a key use case. So if these entities, these regulators are worried about systemic risks, we need to have a better understanding of what those are and why they might be telling banking institutions to exercise caution. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, let's take a dive into the document here. This is the press release that just came out again late in the day on January the 3rd, 2023. Agencies issue a joint statement on crypto asset risk to banking organizations. This joint release came from the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System in partnership with the Federal Deposit Insurance Co uh, Corp uh, Corporation, sorry, uh, or FDIC, as we are commonly aware of them, and the OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. So these bank regulatory agencies issued a statement highlighting key risks for banking organizations associated with crypto assets and the crypto asset sector. So here is the press release itself. I'll link this down in the video description. You can see the summary, and then here's the document. So their statement here is going to address concerns that they've seen over the past year and things they want to start 2023 off with as being some focal points. So the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and OCC are issuing the following statement of crypto asset risks to banking organizations. They say the events of the past year have been marked by significant volatility and the exposure of vulnerabilities in the crypto asset sector. These events highlight a number of key risks associated with crypto assets and crypto asset sector participants that banking organizations should be aware of, including the risk of fraud and scams among crypto asset sector participants, legal uncertainties related to custody practices, redemptions, and ownership rights, some of which are currently the subject of legal processes and proceedings. When you think about what's playing out in bankruptcy courts right now, we're seeing real time what will be the definitions for these ownership rights with the digital assets on those platforms and how that's all going to shape the future of custodial services. And banks will be especially aware of what's going on there because this will be considerations that will have impacts to them if they want to custody crypto assets in the future. Now getting back into it, they say inaccurate or misleading representations and disclosures by crypto asset companies, including misrepresentations regarding federal deposit insurance and other practices that may be unfair, deceptive or abusive, contributing to significant harm to retail and institutional investors, customers and counterparties. We've seen some firms come under scrutiny for claims uh, around federal deposit insurance. Voyager, I believe, was one. They got in some hot water over that because it was not pertaining to the company itself, but rather to their custodial bank. And that led to that whole issue with those deposited dollar amounts being locked up, but then eventually they were released to customers. Continuing, they say significant volatility in crypto asset markets, the effects of which include potential impacts on deposit flows associated with crypto asset companies, the susceptibility of stable coins to run risk, creating potential deposit outflows for banking organizations that hold stable coin reserves, contagion risk within the crypto asset sector, resulting from interconnections among certain participants, including through opaque lending, investing funding service and operational arrangements. These interconnections may also prevent concentration risk for banking organizations with exposures to the crypto asset sector, 
risk management and governance practices in the sector, exhibiting a lack of maturity and robustness, heightened risks associated with open public and or decentralized networks or similar systems, including but not limited to the lack of governance mechanisms establishing oversight of the system, the absence of contracts or standards to clearly establish roles, responsibilities, and liabilities, and vulnerabilities related to cyber attacks, outages, lost or trapped assets, and illicit finance. So as you can see, they've got a lot of warnings there. These are legitimate concerns. We've talked about risks to crypto assets and the crypto asset e ecosystem on the channel in the past. And it's important that we not ignore the fact that these risks exist. A lot of these are due to the centralized nature of certain entities. When we think about businesses like FTX, the interconnectedness between firms, like we saw with Three Arrows Capital and the downstream impacts there. And so all of this is why we're seeing this document come out. Just to recap everything that we saw play out in 2022 and to provide warnings to banks as far as what should be on their radar, what they should be concerned with as they move towards a digital asset future. Certainly the regulators are highlighting these things so that they are fully aware and then they can be held accountable in the future if these banks totally ignore any of these risks. Now, if we dive back into it, they say it's important that risks related to the sector that cannot be mitigated or controlled do not migrate to the banking system. The agencies are supervising banking organizations that may be exposed to risks stemming from the crypto sector and carefully reviewing any proposals from banking organizations to engage in activities that involve crypto assets. Through the agency's case-by-case -case approaches to date, the agencies may continue to build knowledge, expertise, and understanding of the risk crypto assets may pose to banking organizations, their customers, and the broader U.S. financial system. Given the significant risk highlighted by recent failures of several large crypto asset companies, the agencies continue to take a careful and cautious approach related to current or proposed crypto asset related activities and exposures at each banking organization. As we've seen in the past on the banking side, they're always more conservative when it comes to regulations and they're trying to keep a tight rein on what's happening there with the traditional financial institutions. Is this the right approach or are they being too stringent? Let me know what you think in the comments below. They continue saying banking organizations are neither prohibited nor discouraged from providing banking services to customers of any specific class or type as permitted by law or regulation. The agencies are continuing to assess whether or how current and proposed crypto asset related activities by banking organizations can be conducted in a manner that adequately addresses safety and soundness, consumer protection, legal permissibility, and compliance with applicable laws and regulations, including anti-money laundering and illicit finance statutes and rules. Based on the agency's current understanding and experience to date, the agencies believe that issuing or holding as principal crypto assets that are issued, stored, or transferred on an open public and or decentralized network or similar system is highly likely to be inconsistent with safe and sound banking practices. This is a key sentence in here because now they're really opening up the door to say any of these kinds of activities could not meet or be inconsistent with these safe and sound banking practices. And then that leaves the door open for them to take future actions to restrict banks' ability to trade, offer, or uh, custody digital assets. So do keep an eye out for that and make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on more of these rules as we see them start to unfold more in 2023. Further, they continue, the agencies have significant safety and soundness concerns with business models that are concentrated in crypto asset related activities and or have concentrated exposures to the sector. The agencies, so again, this is referring to all the agencies here, the FDIC, the OCC, the Fed, the agencies will continue to closely monitor crypto asset related exposures of banking organizations as warranted. They say the agencies will issue additional statements related to engagement by banking orgs in crypto asset related activities. 
the agencies will also continue to engage and collaborate with other relevant authorities as appropriate on issues arising from activities involving crypto assets. So do keep in mind, this ties back to that Biden executive order where he called for these agencies to work together as it pertains to digital assets. So expect to hear more things along the lines of the uh, SEC and CFTC in partnership with the Fed, the FDIC, the OCC, and all these other agencies, uh, the Treasury, uh, the IRS, which is a part of the Treasury, and more as we move forward. There will be a lot of cross-collaboration among all these government entities, as has been issued in that order. Continuing, they say each agency has developed processes whereby banking organizations emerge in robust supervisory discussions regarding proposed and existing crypto asset related activities banking orgs should ensure that crypto asset related activities can be performed in a safe and sound manner are legally permissible and comply with applicable laws and regulations including those designed to protect consumers such as fair lending and prohibitions against unfair deceptive or abusive acts or practices banking organizations should ensure appropriate risk management including board oversight policies, procedures, risk assessments, controls, gates, and guardrails, and monitoring to effectively identify and manage risks. So there you have it, the full press release. Drop a like if you found any value in that. We have a lot of regulation to come in 2023, and this should be the year where we start to see the ball really begin to move forward. This week, we have the new Congress come in. We've got a lot of proposals out there. Hopefully, they can coalesce around some of the common ideas, find some common ground, even though there is a split Congress, and get something moved forward so that we have clear guidelines so that participants that are trying to do the right thing, like Ripple as an example, trying to meet with regulators, trying to comply, those entities can move forward with comfort knowing that they're not going to find themselves on the wrong side of a lawsuit because they've met the requirements. The problem we have now is it's very opaque when it comes to what these regulators want and what the definitions of digital asset securities, digital asset commodities, and so on really are and how to fit within the regulations regulatory scheme that each agency is trying to bring forward. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Will we get clarity in 2023 or will this year continue to drag on without clear guidelines at the detriment of US-based crypto firms? I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. As always, thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.